Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. This is the third Sunday in Advent, the church season when we wait and watch for God. Today's um, Advent can candle theme is joy. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. We're very glad that you are joining us for worship today. Good morning. My name is Dorothy Sparks. I am deaf, and I am a deacon here at Bread of Life. Welcome. I'm David Devon. Let us enter into worship. The Spirit of the Lord is on us. The Spirit of the Lord is in us. Anointing us. Sending us. Just to bring the good news. What is the good news? Healing the brokenhearted. Freeing the captives. Comforting those who mourn. Providing a cloak of praise. Lifting the heavy spirit. Loosening the weight of grief and loss. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord has come. During this season of Advent, we have a Advent song that we join in together. So that will be um, next in worship.
All right, as we've done in the last couple of weeks, I want to invite any of the children who are joining us for worship to come up close to your screen. I'm gonna come closer to my camera. And if you have an advent calendar at home, you can get your calendar out and we can open our calendars up together. So today is December 13th and number 13 is way over there bottom corner and we'll open the door and we'll find some words to a, a song that we sing during Advent because Advent is a time of waiting. The song is called Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And the words in our calendar today, they say, come, long expected Jesus, born to set your people free, free from our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. maybe noticed I just read the words I didn't sing it because I didn't practice and my singing voice for those of us who can hear my singing voice is kind of out of practice but you'll see David signed it like a song and whether we sing songs or we sign songs or we dance our songs they're all ways of praising God and they are always of waiting and watching for God. And today we're talking about joy. And so in singing songs, it's another way of expressing our joy, of showing how delighted we are to know God. So this week, as you sing songs in your everyday things or sign songs when you're going around doing different things, remember that you are praising God and that you are showing joy in the world. So stay close to your cameras. We're gonna light the candles now. How do we embrace the mystery? We remember the prophet Isaiah, who spoke truth to a lost and confused people. In a precarious time, Isaiah spoke of the God of justice and steadfast love. How do we embrace the mystery? We learn again how God invites us into a new truth. We accept the call to be a people of promise. Today, the third Sunday of Advent, God meets us in the mystery. Thanks be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you Prayer for the day. Lord, the young people around us offer prophecies that challenge and lead to our judgment. So we nod politely with clenched teeth and doubtful hearts. Lord, you invite us to dream new dreams. But honestly, we prefer the familiarity of the past. Winds of vision swirl around us. So we close the windows and bolt the doors. Even on us, even here and now. Your spirit will pour forth. Come Holy Spirit, come. And now a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 11. Before I read the verses for today, I want to explain a little bit of the context about what happened before the Jewish people arrived in Israel, in Jew, uh, Jerusalem, excuse me. The Jewish people had lived in Jerusalem until the invasion of Babylon at which point the temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were bought, brought to Babylon as slaves. The Jewish people were so very sad and their hearts were broken. They remained in Babylon for around a hundred years. They told their children stories about Jerusalem. And then one day the king announced that they would be able to return to Jerusalem, though still remain under the Babylonian control. The Jewish people were so excited to return to their homeland some of them who have never seen their homeland before. However, when they arrived, they were shocked at what they found. The temple, Jerusalem, still in ruins. Their hearts were broken and they were very sad. This moved God, and so God called Isaiah, a prophet, to go and share the good news with the Jerusalem people. 
And this is what was shared. The spirit of the Lord God has taken control of me. The Lord has chosen and sent me to tell the oppressed the good news. To heal the brokenhearted and to announce freedom for prisoners and captives. This is the year when the Lord God will show kindness to us and punish our enemies. The Lord has sent me to comfort those who mourn, especially in Jerusalem. He sent me to give them flowers in place of their sorrow. Olive oil in place of tears and joyous praise. In place of broken hearts. They will be called trees of justice planted by the Lord to honor his name. Then they will rebuild the cities that have been in ruins for many generations. They will hire foreigners to take care of their sheep and their vineyards. But they themselves will be priests and servants of the Lord our God. The treasures of the nations will belong to them and they will become famous. They were terribly insulted and horribly mistreated. Now, they will be greatly blessed and joyful forever. I, the Lord, love justice, but hate robbery and injustice. My people, I solemnly promise to reward you with an eternal agreement. Your descendants will be known in every nation. All who see them will realize that they have been blessed by me the Lord. I celebrate and shout because of my Lord God. His saving power and justice are the very clothes I wear. They are more beautiful than the jewelry worn by a bride or a groom. The Lord will bring about justice and praise in every nation on earth, like flowers blooming in a garden. Amen. My family in Christ, we live in mystery and uncertainty in life. And yet, we embrace faith. 
we practice our faith, we show our faith how? By doing it with prayer, trust, waiting, and watching. So this Advent, it is my hope that we will practice our faith every day. My friends, today is the third Sunday in Advent. There are four Sundays in Advent, and then we have Christmas Eve. This is the Sunday when we focus on joy. Uh, the first week, i just add the first week we focused on hope. The second week we focus, we tend to focus on love, the promise that God loves us, and then our realization that we fall short of God's love often. And then we shift our focus to joy. And I think joy is tricky because it often gets confused with feeling happy. But joy is something deeper. It's something that lasts longer. It stays regardless of how we are feeling. So joy is still in us even when we are sad and lonely. Joy is somehow, it's deeper than our grief or our anger. Joy outlasts our losses and our fears and our pain. And joy is strong because it can propel us in the hard work of creating justice and peace in the world. And, and at the same time, that joy does not discount all of our other feelings. Joy does not deny that we hurt. Somehow, through God's power, through how amazing God is really, joy waits. And it bubbles up. Somehow joy breaks through even in the hardest times of life. And that is what the prophet Isaiah is describing in today's Bible lesson. The people of God are returning to their homeland after being in exile as slaves in Babylon for about a hundred years. This is a new generation of people returning to the lands that they have learned about through stories and songs. And when they return, they encounter disappointments and struggles and loneliness. And 
they began to lose faith in God. And they are losing the vision of who God calls them to be. And so the prophet sets forth to remind them. The prophet says, you are the people of God. Let me help you imagine what that means here and now. You are the ones who bring the good news that our God is different than others. Our God is more powerful and more amazing. God's heart is connected to those who have no power. God is touched to act on behalf of the brokenhearted and the prisoners. God is concerned about comforting those who mourn and are grief stricken. God is on the side of those whose homes who have, have been ruined. And God walks with and cares for the refugees. Prophet Isaiah continues to encourage and remind the people and says, you are the people of God. You will share your fortunes with those who are desperate. You will lift up those who are pushed down. And you will share your good fortune with those who might have pushed you out. You are the people of God. You will be hope for the world because the light and the life of God show through you. You are the people of God. And because you are mine, you have a new vision for the world. You know what I value. And to remind you of this, the earth, the earth itself will rejoice. The earth will grow gardens and the flowers and the fruits, the trees and the grasses, all of those growing things will bring us all to rejoice together. This is what the prophet Isaiah is encouraging us with too. Help us remember our vision to help us remember who our God is. Remember that joy that we are grounded in. 
find our reconnection to joy in hope, in this hope, that our God is on the side of the outcast and the oppressed. To remember that joy is experienced when Jesus takes care of the lepers and the hungry ones. And to remember that joy is present even when we are grieving or are lonely. Joy is there underneath us supporting us and waiting until we notice it breaking forth. Joy is like a wildflower garden, one that has popped up in an unexpected place. That joy is when we notice those beautiful flowers. We look closely. We are amazed. And then we join with those flowers in rejoicing. Right now, in this season, in this year, our world, our world is full of disappointments. So many people are struggling. And every one of us, I think, is feeling lonely. So we too may begin to lose faith in God. And it is tempting to ignore the vision of who God calls us to be. And yet, we are the people of God. We are people who draw near to God. And when we do that, our hearts are connected to those who have no power in this world. We are people who draw near to God. And when we do that, we have the strength and the energy to act on behalf of the brokenhearted and the prisoners. We are the people of God. And when we draw near to God, <clears throat> we have the kindness and the compassion to comfort those who mourn. We are the people of God. And we draw near to God. And when we do that, we have the courage and the stamina to stand alongside those who are without homes, 
to be on the side of the refugees. So this week, even though it's a hard week, as we draw closer to Christmas, we have to figure out what Christmas will be like in 2020. This week, I hope that you can notice the things that are like wildflower gardens. Where do you notice the earth showing us joy? Where do you notice joy in an unexpected place? And then you are amazing. This week, when you notice that joy, I hope that you break forth in joy too. Amen. Prayers for the people. Advent God, you come to us in hope, love, joy, and peace. Thank you for hope that includes others in faith. Thank you for love that sustains our lives, even in uncertain times. Thank you for joy that illumines and inspires our lives. Thank you for peace that allows us to live in friendship with others. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that things are not now how they have always been. And this is not how it will always be. You come to us, God, and still we need to remember that your kingdom has come. It is growing among us now and that the time will come when it fills the world with justice and love you come to us god and still we need to remember many people experience poverty pain trauma, and grief. These experiences make your kingdom feel like a faraway dream. 
many people are dismayed by your followers. They long to see your love and justice expressed through your followers. And we followers often make mistakes and fail. Many people in your church long to be faithful and to make a positive difference for children, a positive difference in addition to caring for their children, their extended families, their students, their jobs, and many more responsibilities. You come to us, God, and still we hope We hope that we experience God with us in every moment of every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also... At this time, we invite you to share the peace of God with one another, to reach out to one another and remind each other that we have peace with God. Always, uh, every week during this pandemic time, I feel like sharing the piece and um, collecting the offering is very weird. <laughs> every week it feels like awkward, not sure what we're doing. But it is true every week that is important for us to take time to share the piece with one another. And it is important for us to share some of the gifts that God gives to us. And our money is one of the ways that we people feel like we are sharing a part of our lives. Each week we have a little introduction to that time of offering, time for you to prepare your offerings. And so let us be inspired by Jesus' mom, Mary. Let our hearts praise the Lord. Let our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. For God has remembered us, humble servants. And in our mighty God, we celebrate the great things that you have done for us. Here at Bread of Life, we celebrate that God calls us to this work. Just like Mary, the mother of Jesus, was called to do a particular thing. God asks us to give witness to the good news that God loves us. And God asks us to share this good news with the deaf community and their families. And so every week we invite you into this calling 
to help us do this work. We are open to ideas for how we can connect with the deaf community and for your time and your talents to help us do that. And for your financial support so that we can continue this work. Because it is not free and we need your help. So we ask that you would send a check to Bread of Life or that you would use PayPal to make ongoing or one-time donations to Bread of Life. An offering prayer. Lord, from one generation to another, you have shown mercy on those who honor you. You have stretched out your mighty arm. You scatter the conceited and confuse their schemes. You bring down tyrants. And lift up the lowly. You fill the hungry with good things. but send the rich away empty. You have kept your promises to us. You have come to our help. You will show your people your love forever. Our hearts praise you, O God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your heart. We lift them to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer. Through whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. You will make all things new. And so, with the choirs of angels in heaven, with the church on earth, 
and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join in their unending hymn. We invite you to join in the holy, holy with us. On Jesus last night, when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, thanked God, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will not be voice. Come to the table, join Jesus in the feast. Come to the table, join Jesus as he comes to us. Come to the table, be fed with Jesus' words and Jesus' food. You all are invited to this table, but this is God's table, and we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feed. When you serve one another, please use language with bread. This is the body of Christ given for you with the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're by yourself, I will administer the bread and the cup for you at home. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice made visible in flame. You call us to be your people, faithful and courageous. Jesus embraced his mission in the waters of baptism. He went out to feel, feed, and heal and comfort others. Lead us now from this gathering, fed and encouraged, to join in your transforming work to feed, heal, and comfort others. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. God gathers us into this worship service, even though we are far apart from one another, all in our own homes. God gathers us. In the same way, God now sends us out. We are not scattered in the wind. God sends us. So as you are sent, here is a blessing for you. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from our Creator, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is our counselor and friend. God, in your word, you promise that your servants will go in peace. You send us now. We have experienced your salvation. You have prepared us with everyone looking on. Your faith shines forth for all. Your glory is revealed even in faithful people. Thanks be to God. Amen. 